To review the business use case for the document cash activity, Canyonero Enterprises stores their product information in Salesforce, maintaining the most up-to-date pricing. Small's store is an independent reseller and they carry many of Canyonero's products, but keep their own pricing database in-house. Now, sometimes Small's in-house prices get out of sync with Canyonero's. So we will process invoices containing product codes and prices. We'll cache the current product codes and prices from Salesforce. We'll match the product codes, then compare the in-house prices to Salesforce. If needed, we'll update the in-house price list and then write any updated file to disk. I'm going to demonstrate the activity, which is on pages 15 to 23 of the activity guide. In the training account, under developer two, I'm gonna add a document cache folder. Then from the process library, I'll install the document cache activity. Let's take a look at the Salesforce operation. To limit the number of Salesforce records being returned, we've configured this query to return only products and prices that are listed in the in-house flat file document. We have a filter that's going to filter by product code and this references the filter in the Salesforce Connector Parameter tab. It will pull records that match the product code field from the incoming flat file field. I'm gonna load the Salesforce connection, choosing from our connections folder, Boomi Training Salesforce. And now under the Parameters tab, this is where we will reference the flat file profile to retrieve the product code. Now we're going to configure the add to cache shape product list updates. The profile type is XML. You need to choose the profile here. Salesforce price book entry query response. And we're gonna add an index. For the index name, we'll enter product. And I'm going to add a profile element key. I'll choose the element here, product code, and click OK. Now that profile element key has been added to the index. Next, I'll configure the decision shape. This is going to determine if a price needs to be updated based on the values that are stored in the cache. So our first value here will be a profile element. We're looking here at the unit price. And we're going to compare that with the comparison value not equal to. For the second value, we'll, we will add a document cache lookup choosing our document cache here, product list updates, and the cache index of product. Our output parameter will be the unit price. We have our key, 
of product code, and I need to assign a value here. This will be a profile element. Using the same flat file profile and bringing in the product code. So if the keys and the parameter values match, the output parameter of unit price is returned from the cache and then stored as the second value here in the decision. The decision logic says if the price has changed, map the price stored in the document cache to the updated flat file. We're going to use add cache data in the source profile or the document cache lookup function. We are going to use the document cache lookup function to determine if the price needs to be updated. So I'm going to open the price updates map. Here in the document cache lookup, click the edit icon. For the cache index, it will be product. And the output is going to be the unit price. So the product code will come from the flat file. And if it needs to be updated, the unit price will be updated here. We'll save and close the map, save the process. And one final thing to do here is to configure the disk connection using the work directory from the connections folder. And now we can run a test. The test has completed. So if we look here at the disk connector under connection data, we can see that two products have been updated. 1020 and 1060. And here in the false path, ten forty has not been updated. If we look at the logs in the decision shape, we'll see for ten twenty that the decision shape looked up from the cache to get that first value of 5,500, comparing that to the value of 5,000. So 5,500 is not equal to 5,000, that's true. Therefore, the document processed down the true path where it was updated here in the map. Now it's your turn to complete the document cache activity. It's on pages 15 to 23 of the activity guide.